doesn't have anything to add. So uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you don't hear me properly or you think the font size is uh, too big or, or rather too small, then uh, please let me know. And uh, use the HECM, uh, sorry, the the Google Doc. It's not the Google Doc, uh, the SharePoint Doc for the Q&A. Or if you really prefer the chat, that's fine as well. And I'll uh, try to make breaks so that you can get uh, uh, to ask some questions live as well. But uh, otherwise, uh, raise uh, raise uh, your hand and I'll try to not miss it. Uh, just uh, one second. I can't actually see all of you. So, uh, OK. OK, then, so uh, what uh, we are going to continue with is uh, investigating the commit tree. Uh, how uh, how we can uh, refer to different commits and uh, how we actually can change commits. And uh, that will mostly be uh, what we will be doing uh, tomorrow. So uh, first off is uh, investigating the history of our commits. Uh, the, com the command that uh, you have seen already, but we'll go a bit more into depth uh, uh, now, is uh, the git uh, log one. So uh, by uh, default, git log is going to uh, uh, print information uh, on uh, the head commit and all the parents, or well, all the, uh, sorry, the ancestors of, uh, of this uh, commit. So in this uh, case here, uh, we see that this commit with hash 84 and so on is the head commit. And it is also the tip of the master branch. In your case, it may be the main branch. Does uh, not really matter. And that will be followed by the committer and the date for the commit and uh, the commit message. And after the information on this uh, first commit, then we'll have info on all the ancestors. In this case, only uh, only uh, one of them is uh, shown. But if you have uh, a long commit tree, then it will print all of them. So uh, uh, if you do not want information on the default head, then you can add the argument ref, and that will print information uh, on uh, the commit with this reference and all the commits that are reachable from that. That means all the ancestors of that uh, commit. Uh, so uh, in this example here, uh, we want information on this co particular commit and its ancestors. And uh, if you go back, it's actually not the very latest commit, but it was a um, different one. So a, a commit which was uh, older in uh, time. A very useful option is the dash N1. Uh, and that is going to print only a number of commits. Uh, specified uh, by the argument following the de uh, the dash uh, n option, so uh, git log dash n and a number will print only the n most uh, recent commits, and this is particularly useful if you have a very long uh, commit uh, tree. Um, another useful option is the dash dash one line, and it can be followed by a reference for uh, for a uh, commit. Default again is uh, is just uh, head. Then you can skip this reference. And what uh, one line does is um, it is not going to print the entire commit uh, messages. So for for each of the commit that it uh, lists, but it will only print the first line of the commit, as in uh, this example here. So we have the uh, shortened version, a shortened hash of. Uh, uh, sorry, a shortened version of the hash followed by um, the reference to this commit, if it exists, in this case it is had, and also the tip of the branch, master, and the very first line of the commit message. And this for each, uh, each of the existing um, commits. <clears throat> and uh, this is more readable. And uh, it also emphasizes the fact that it's good to write good commit messages. 
which have a uh, suitable first line so that you can easily understand what the commit is uh, all about. You can, of course, uh, <coughs> tailor this uh, command even uh, further by using dash dash format with different options. Uh, and this may be useful if, for example, you want information on um, who has uh, the email of, of the person that has uh, committed um, uh, well, a certain uh, commit so that you may contact that person, for example, if you're working in a shared repository, which we'll see on Thursday. And there are many different options uh, which uh, which you may use. So I would say that uh, short and email are probably the, the most common ones. Uh, one uh, useful option is uh, git log uh, uh, dash dash grab. And this is going to allow you to search for a regular expression in the commit messages. So uh, in this example here, we are looking for the word bug uh, uh, in, all, in the entire uh, um, uh, commit messages. And we find uh, one, uh, one uh, hit, uh, this commit here, uh, submitted by this author that has uh, the commit message, fix the bug, uh, the cost, uh, and so on, so on. So this is useful if you, um, uh, if you have, uh, if you're looking for, for a certain error or bug in your code, and it again, it stresses the importance of writing sensible commit messages. So for example, if you introduce a new function or you really fix the bug, then uh, you should specify this very clearly in your commit messages. Okay, um, so uh, if you, for example, uh, go uh, go on holiday and then you want to, you get uh, back to your uh, repo that you work uh, together with your collaborators and you want to get up to date to what has happened during your break, then you can check um, uh, the, the history of the commit tree within a certain period of time by adding these options here, dash dash after, and before and um, and the date so the format for the date is uh, is generally is rather free so you can uh, specify it either this way the end of may or you can have it like a in uh, in the swedish standard so that's uh, rather flexible and then you may see all the commits for example within a, a certain period of time And uh, more useful are the options uh, dash dash name status. And uh, what this is going to show you is all the files that have been changed for, uh, for the commits that it uh, outputs. So um, by default, this information is missing, but now you can see that for this particular commit with this hash, which is, uh, actually the head, the most uh, recent commit, then uh, uh, there is one file which has been modified. Uh, this is what this capital M means. And there is one file which has been deleted. And uh, if you want even more information, so let's say you are very interested in one particular commit, then you may add more information with dash dash stat. And uh, that will give even more information well, the content of the file, what which lines have been added or removed, and, and so on. And um, something which is really useful when we are working with multiple branches, and we are going to use this actually a lot uh, during the branches lesson on uh, well tomorrow after uh, tomorrow in the second part and on Thursday, is dash dash graph and dash dash all. Uh, so. Um, Dash dash graph is uh, going to, well, I think, well, add all these uh, little stars and uh, lines uh, together with decorate, I think. And uh, dash dash all is going to display all the branches uh, that have been uh, uh, defined for your uh, repository. So in this example here, so git log dash dash graph all and one line so that we only specify one commit for uh, each um, uh, 
only one, one line for each commit, then we see that we have two branches. It's the master one and the second branch here. And uh, so this was the very first commit uh, of this uh, repository. And at this point in time, we see that the, the um, work has been split into two lines of work. We have one line of work, uh, the master branch, and then we have another line of work, which is this second branch. And then in the latest commit, uh, these, have, these two branches have been merged again. And we'll uh, learn more about this uh, uh, tomorrow as well. And you have seen some of it uh, during uh, Birita's uh, lesson. But uh, this is a really very useful command, again, when you are working with several branches. And uh, it's rather lengthy, so you may actually de um, define an alias for it, as, um, as Pedro has uh, showed you in uh, his lesson. But I will show you again uh, in, uh, in a few slides. So uh, uh, git log is going to display only the changes that have affected the commit tree. But, uh, uh, and then for example, if you, if you remove some commit from your history, then, uh, then you will not be able to find it anymore unless you actually refer to this called uh, ref uh, log. So what ref log uh, does is to store all the extra logging information. So uh, all the commands that uh, change the head reference are going to be stored in uh, this uh, ref log. The command that you can access it with is git ref log, and I'll show you an example very soon. And um, you may even use git log dash g ref so that you can uh, merge the information that you would get typically with uh, git log together with the one from uh, ref log. And ref again is a reference for uh, for a particular hash. Default is again head. So uh, let's assume that uh, we create and then uh, later discard the commit. Uh, we'll have some exercise on this later. So if you don't follow everything, uh, don't worry. But let's go through this uh, uh, example one by line, uh, line by line. So uh, what I do in uh, in the very first line is just to modify a file txt. So I'm actually going to write. Uh, sorry, I'm going to add more content to this file in this file txt. And in the next step, I am going to uh, to um, stage these modifications by using the dash a uh, option uh, for the commit git commit command. And then I'm going to um, commit it with the message I'm going to lead this. So staging and committing combined is git commit dash a and then followed by uh, the commit message. And uh, as a result of this commit, of this command, I have this uh, commit on the master branch with this commit message. And I also get some information on what has been changed uh, in uh, this commit. Then I can uh, check the commit tree with git log uh, one line. And I see, well, some first commit and then the latest commit, uh, which, uh, which has just been uh, um, submitted in uh, this case. So uh, let's say that I am unhappy with my uh, latest commit and I simply want to uh, remove it. And the way I can do that is using the git reset command and the option dash dash hard and then the commit that I want to reset it to. And I can refer to, and in this case, I want to get back to this commit. So I want to get to the stage uh, of that commit and I can refer to that by writing head and tilde. So what tilde means is the parent of this commit, in this case, head. Now, a git reset is a very dangerous command. You may lose some of your work unless you uh, uh, use it with care, but it is also one of the most used commands. So 
uh, you should uh, not be uh, afraid to use it. But before you do, I strongly recommend that uh, that you do uh, git uh, status and you do git log so that you know in which state your repository is. And a few words on the dash dash hard option. So um, um, this means that it is going to clear out all the files that you have staged and also the modifications that you have in the working directory. And there are a few more uh, options with git reset and we will cover that and hopefully that will be clearer. And uh, so after doing git reset uh, to, uh, to the parent of head, then what I have is just uh, one commit in the commit tree, which is uh, uh, simply the output of git log. So I have no information whatsoever of this uh, commit that uh, I had uh, done just before. Okay, this is uh, uh, and uh, so is this commit really gone from uh, from the repository? And uh, the answer is uh, no. But uh, one sorry, one more uh, thing I should stress out before we do that is that when I do git reset with this option, uh, so what happens is that, I not only change the reference to head, so from 2F or something, something to 23, I'm also going to move the tip of the branch. So master. So master is not going to point to this uh, commit, um, but it's going to be uh, referencing this other commit. So this is what git reset does. Moves the head and also moves the tip of the branch. Okay, so then uh, the question was, is this commit lost to us or we can or can we still uh, refer to it? And this is where git ref log uh, comes in handy. So again, git ref log is going to print all the commits that have changed the head reference. So, uh, um, and it's going to do this in inverse chronological order. So let's, uh, investigate this from the very bottom. So this was our very first uh, commit. Um, and uh, it will, uh, so git ref log is going to show the command that has resulted into in the change of head. So that was the git commit command. And it will also print the commit uh, message if it is a commit. And then after that, there was a second commit I'm going to delete this. I will just get back and uh, do a recap. So we have done this uh, commit. Um, so that uh, that is also referenced in the ref log. And uh, uh, the this is the new uh, hash that the head uh, got after uh, after doing this uh, second commit. And then what we had done. Uh, recently is to reset the head and as a result the uh, the reference for head has moved from 2f5 to 23b and then again it is written what the git uh, so the fact that we have used the git reset and as a result of that uh, we have uh, we have moved uh, the head reference and um uh, we may refer to um, to this uh, lost commit, the 2F1, either by using this hash that is given here, or we can could actually use this reference here. So head, uh, add-on, and uh, uh, one in uh, brackets. But again, if you do git reset or git checkout for that matter, it's very important that you do a lot of git log or git graph before and after you use uh, these uh, commands. Okay, so uh, we can refer to this, um, or oh, we can recover this uh, lost uh, commit. And uh, 
And the way we could do that is git checkout to this uh, commit. And uh, so uh, it's important to know that git is allowed to delete orphan commits. And what does this mean? It's uh, uh, commits that uh, they do not have uh, a uh, parent or they do not belong to uh, to any branch. So uh, the 2f uh, exam the commit uh, with the 2f hash is an example of one such commit. So every once in a while, the ref logs are going to get uh, cleaned. And unless you have recovered these uh, lost commits, then um, they may be gone forever. So it's uh, um, yeah, important to recover them fairly soon. Okay, so we are going to continue now with uh, comparing uh, commits. And uh, again, uh, let's uh, give one example of, uh, of a commit tree, which consists of uh, all the same two branches, the second branch and the master one. And, uh, and um, if I want, for example, to uh, compare what I have done, well, to compare the contents of my very first commit to let's say, uh, for example, the second commit in the master branch, then I uh, can use the git diff command with different arguments. And in these cases, I want to compare two commits. I'm going to give the hashes of these two commits. Uh, so 23 one and the D3 one. And uh, what this will um, give us output is all the files that are different in these two commits. And uh, so it will uh, give in from the first uh, one, um, the files which are different in the first um, uh, commit and then compared to the second one. So um, uh, just to rephrase, so the difference is that uh, uh, I have uh, this more content in uh, my uh, second commit. And actually the, this file is very interesting that is uh, uh, the same in, all, uh, in both of these uh, commits. It does not have a minus or plus. So we have to have a minus here, then this it means that this is deleted in the second commit compared to the first one. If it has a plus, then it's an additional content in the second commit uh, with compared to the first one. And what is second or first? I mean, it's uh, well depends on the uh, order of the hashes that you give as arguments. So uh, let's say that we are only interested in one particular file uh, of these commits. And this is helpful if you have uh, a lot of changes in the different commits. So uh, uh, in addition to specifying the hashes of the commits that you want to um, uh, uh, look, look at the difference for, then you should also add dash dash. So it's a double dash here and then uh, followed by the name uh, of the file that you want to look into. In this case, file txt. And uh, in this particular case, we get exactly the same information as before for the reason that this is the only file that has been changed. But of course, if, if more files would be changed then this would, uh, this command would show the difference for all the files. Okay. Um, I'll go to for this slide uh, and then uh, we can take some questions. So uh, Pedro has showed uh, some of this uh, already. So we'll do just a quick uh, recap here. Uh, so uh, what is very important at different stages uh, while uh, you are working on a repository is to know what modifications you have in your working directory and which of these modifications have you staged already and uh, which of them have been uh, uh, have been uh, not staged yet or what is the difference for example with uh, the latest commit and uh, we can do this again, together uh, uh, with the uh, git uh, diff command with uh, different arguments. 
So if I uh, if I use the git command with the argument head, then this is going to list all the uncommitted changes. So what does the uh, uncommitted changes is? So the changes in my working directory that have not been committed yet. And uh, these changes can be either um, staged or not. But again, it is going to show, in, uh, show differences between working directory and the latest commit. So head. Uh, now, if I want to see which of these changes are actually unstaged, then I use the com uh, command git diff. So this shows differences between working directory and the staging area or the index. And uh, if I want to see, okay, which are the changes I have made and staged and how do they compare with the latest commit, then I should use the command git diff dash dash cached. And I should add uh, one uh, thing here is that um, this may sometimes be hard to remember. And as a beginner, I recommend that uh, you use the git status command. And that is going to uh, to uh, show you, is going to output all the files that you have modified, but not staged, files that you have modified and staged, and give you some recommendations for which commands you could uh, use in the following, depending on what you want to do. One thing to stress is that the output of this git status command may depend a bit on, on the version of git that you have. So if you do not get exactly what your colleague gets, by using the same commands, then uh, that is one explanation. Okay, so uh, are there some questions regarding the material I have covered up to now? If so, please uh, speak up because I have lost the window with the participants. Any questions? Okay. I don't see anything in the Q&A. Okay, okay, then. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, uh, think a little bit. We have 15 minutes left. So then uh, actually what we could do at this uh, point is uh, an exercise. And uh, I am going to bring forward my uh, terminal window here. So um, uh, please go to the exercises, uh, the exercise directory that, uh, that you cloned from uh, GitHub. If you don't remember where that is, so uh, we'll paste the link in the chat. Anyway, what I have here is, oh, sorry, let's do this first. I have uh, a clone of the course intro git material. And in that, uh, in this directory, well, I will go to the git uh, materials uh, directory. Oh, I am there. I am going to go to uh, the exercises for, um, for this uh, lesson, and that is uh, for dot commits. And uh, among these exercises here, what I would like you to do is to do this very first one, one dot log. And uh, do that for, uh, I think it should take you around five minutes, but, um, but uh, let me know if you need more time the commits which are relevant to this uh, repository. So uh, I have the master branch um, that is uh, um, listed by uh, default. If I add uh, the option all, then I'm going to see all branches that are uh, defined for this repository. And that is the experiment and uh, new direction. And uh, and then uh, the other question was um, 
uh, yes, try to filter the output so that commits that contain the word abandon in the commit message are shown. And then to do that, I'm going to use the git log command, but with the option grab. And uh, what I should grab for is abandon. So then only commits with this uh, um, word in the commit message will be shown. And that uh, gives one hit for this particular commit. And then I can see the commit uh, message here. Okay, so um, uh, last question regarding this exercise was whether the ref, the ref log contains anything uh, interesting. So then let's do that, git ref log. And actually I see that uh, uh, there has been a lot of experimentation on this um, on this uh, particular uh, commit. So uh, uh, a few commits have been done. Uh, uh, Git checkout has been used, and this is what we will be doing in the following tomorrow. And uh, and then uh, yeah, so it's mostly commits with the exception of one uh, Git uh, checkout. And uh, uh, the second part of this uh, last question was, can I see where the head was six steps ago? And the way I could do that, so either looking at git ref log and count back these uh, six uh, different uh, steps, or what I could uh, do is I could git, I can use the command that, uh, that uh, Brita has uh, shown you, and that is git uh, ref parse. So uh, git ref parse and then uh, uh, the um, reference for uh, for uh, that hash. And that is this. So this tells me where the where the head has been six steps back. And uh, I can uh, shorten the output of this by adding the option dash dash short. So this is going to simply shorten the hash. Otherwise I would have gotten a long hash for this particular uh, commit. So uh, this is one way of finding out where the head has been six uh, steps back. And if I count back from here, so this is where the head is right now. And one, two, three, four, five, six should give me the same uh, uh, hash. And that is uh, correct. So uh, yes, this is it. And sorry for getting into the wrong repo to uh, begin with. And uh, thanks for pointing that out. So um, uh, I can mention a bit what we'll be doing tomorrow. So we'll uh, check how we can navigate further into the commit tree. And uh, most importantly is how to change some of the commits that we have uh, performed. And this uh, that is a bit aggressive because uh, some commits may be lost, but we will be using gitreflog again to recover some of those um, commits. And um, before we close for today, are there any questions regarding either this lesson or anything else uh, in that we have done today or yesterday? And uh, if you do, please uh, speak up.